What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 63 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at Map Transfer Arrows. First, we're going to be looking at Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, for an example of exactly what I mean. Then after that, we're going to look at setting it up in our own game. We're going to set it up for a house, and then we're going to set it up for a cave. Then afterwards, we're actually going to be looking at Pokemon Emerald as well, because they do the arrows slightly differently. Now you might be wondering, what exactly am I talking about? So, let's get into it and find out. I'm talking about the arrows that appear when you're going to leave a interior map. It occurs when you're leaving houses, it occurs when you're leaving a Pokemon Center here, it occurs when you're leaving caves, and it's this little arrow here that pops up when you are ready to transfer a map. It only appears when you're facing down, it doesn't occur when you're facing left or right, so if you walk to the left or to the right here, then the arrow doesn't appear, and it only appears when you're facing down. But I think it looks pretty nice, and it's something that I haven't really seen in very many other Pokemon Essentials fan games. Like, this right here is the Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. I think this is Pokemon uh, Fire Red that I'm playing right now. And um, I think it just adds that little touch of polish that not a lot of other games, that not a lot of other fan games have captured, and I think it looks pretty good for our game. So, let's exactly break down how this works. The way that it should work is if we step on this tile, right in front of the transfer tile, and we're facing down, then the arrow should appear. If we walk away, then the arrow should disappear. Also, if we are not facing down, the arrow should not ever appear. So, that's actually probably pretty easy for us to put in our game. Also, check this out. Since I'm playing in Visual Boy Advance here, it's a, it's a very nice emulator, I'm gonna really quick change the screen size to times two. And then when you're in times two, it's actually very easy to take all of the like pixel art from the game and like rip it out for our own usages. So check this out. I'm gonna hit Alt print screen here to only print screen this window. Then I'm just gonna go into paint and then open up paint over here and then paste this in. Let me hit Alt print screen again because it looked like it didn't take. Alt print screen, that's how you only capture the active window. Bada boom. Now. Let's zoom in and see exactly what we're looking for here. We're looking for this arrow sprite. Let's crop it out right here. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So this is the arrow that we want to appear in our game. It looks like there's a one pixel, or rather a two pixel border around the entire arrow. So if you want, you can go and painstakingly crop out this two pixel border. Or you could check the description of this video because I've already gone and done this. I actually have made it into a character sprite that I just called arrows.png and I put it in my characters folder in my Pokemon game. So check this out. Each of these arrows is a 32 by 32 sprite. And you'll notice here that these two on the left are higher up and these two on the right are lower. The way that this works is it's meant to uh, be the same as other character sprites. So let's look at another example. Let's look at um, our main character. Look at him. So you'll notice that this is his sprites, or these are his sprites when he's walking downwards. I'm just using the same for our arrow as if it's walking downwards, but it only has two frames. Well, it really has four frames, but we have two duplicates. So the first frame when he walks down looks like this, the second frame when he walks down looks like that, and then this and this. So if that makes, if it's a little bit confusing, I'm sorry, but the way that this works is essentially if our arrow is facing down and it's moving, then it will have two frames here where it's up, then two frames here where it's down. And I think the distance here is only what, four pixels? Yeah, so it's here, and then it moves down four pixels, and then it moves back up four pixels, up and forth forever. But that's the thing. It only does that when it's moving down, right? Our player only has this animation play when he's moving downwards, right? Well, actually, in Pokemon Essentials, there's something really neat that you can do where if you're facing down and standing still, there's a setting that you can enable on events called Stop Animation, where even if it's not moving, it will be animated. So for example, if we have our arrow here, let me uh, just select arrows, and we turn stop animation on, then it will always be moving. Let's show this in game now, shall we? There we go, there's our little arrow. Now the idea here is that this arrow will only appear 
when we're uh, inside a house or inside a cave and we're ready to map transfer. So let's get that set up now, shall we? Looks pretty cool, right? Let's delete this dumb little event here and let's start making our house. As I like to do with everything in Pokemon Essentials, I'm gonna just rip events from existing maps. Here, we have a nice little house. Copy that. Go back to our little house. That's pretty nice as well. Paste it right here. It looks like it's already using the same door. So that's kind of cool. Now, let's make it so that way instead of taking us into Sedolin City, it takes us into our house. Easy peasy. Now, let's go back to Sedolin City. And let's try, or Larusian Town or whichever. Yeah, let's go to Sedolin City. Let's try looking at the interior transfers that they have all set up here. And let's try tweaking these so our arrow appears. It's actually pretty dang easy. I'll show you how to do it right now. So, let's paste this here for our house. And let's make sure that instead of transferring us to Sedolin City, it transfers us properly to our little tutorial map here. Bada boom. Now, what we could do is just make it so that way this is the arrow sprite. But that will just make it so that way it always appears. How do we make it so it doesn't always appear? Well, let's set up some events around it. Let's make an event here where when it's stepped on... Uh, for this event, actually, we're going to want to use Event Touch. But just to, sh just to make a point, let's make this one right here. So when it's stepped on, something happens. Well, we want, something, we want the uh, results to change based on the direction our character is facing, right? If you're facing down, the arrow should appear. But if you're facing left and right when you step on it, the arrow should not appear. We can do that with a conditional branch. Make a little conditional branch here. On the third page, you can actually select character, player, or anything else. Player is facing down. Perfect. So if the player is facing down when you step on this, then it should change the graphic of this exit transfer one to the arrow. Really quick, um, make sure that this is named something. Right now, this is named exit, so that's convenient. But if you didn't name something, this, if you didn't name it anything, this next part could be a little bit confusing and hard to set up. Anyway, if you step on this and you're facing down, let's do a set move route here. Because in set move route, you can actually change graphic to arrows. Bada boom. And instead of changing the player to arrows, we want to change exit. This is why you name it. If it wasn't named, then all you would see here is be like Evo 02. And you'd be like, Wh which, which event is mine? So if you step on it and you're facing down, then it changes to arrows. And then let's say otherwise, if you step on it and you're facing any other direction, then instead it will change to none. Perfect. Now, let's showcase that in our game. We're not done yet, but we're close. Let's take a look at how this looks in our game. Let's go into our house. Ah, what a lovely house. I love this house, but I must leave. I step on it, and then the arrow appears. See, it's not animating though, because we didn't set up all the stuff. And it also doesn't disappear, because we haven't set up the rest. But we have got an arrow appearing here, and it does look like it disappears if you step on it when you're not facing down. So we're making progress. Now, let's polish this up a little bit. Let's make it look a little bit nicer. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is go back to our, our exit event and turn stop animation on. Additionally, I like to lower the speed and frequency to 2, so that way it closer, or more closely matches the speed in the fire red leaf green transfer. You see, that's a little bit slower. Now, let's make it so that way those arrows disappear when we step anywhere else. Now, let's put some events nearby that do the same thing as this event, but only turn it off. Which we can actually just copy this event and paste it, then go to edit. So what we want here is this little bit of code, or this little bit of the event, and just delete everything else. So if we step on this, then um, it'll make it so that way it turns the exit to none. However, I think that the way that it works in Pokemon Fire Red is a little bit different, right? It's not just stepping on it, it's right before you step on it. So like, let's uh, let's zoom in on this and get a real good look at exactly how this looks. When you are about to step on it, like I press down now, the arrow appears before I land on the tile. The way that player touch works is it runs it after you've landed on the tile. We want to do it before we land on the tile. Fortunately, this is actually super easy to do for our game. Instead of using player touch, you just want to use event touch. 
boom, perfecto. Event touch is also ran when your character rotates, so this is actually going to be a really nice looking event now with event touch. So, if you touch this event and uh, you're, it doesn't matter what direction you're facing, it turns that to no arrows. So let's just put that here and here, and bada boom, I think we should be all done with our arrow setup here. Now, let's see how it looks in our game once again. Walk right on in, and there's no arrow. If I walk up, there's no arrow. If I walk left and right across here, no arrow appears. However, if I face down, then the arrow does appear. If I face right, the arrow disappears. Face up, left. But if I face down again, then the arrow appears again. If I hold down for too long, then I'll actually walk down and then start the transfer. But look at that. We got our arrow popping in and popping out. That's pretty nice, right? Yeah. Now it looks a little bit more believable, like it's a little bit closer to how Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green set theirs up. Let me just show that over here now. Yeah. And then let me tab back to my game so that way they're both going. Look at that. We have got a very similar arrow effect now to how Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green work. Pretty friggin' snazzy. Now, let's set this up for a cave, and then after we set it up for a cave, let's uh, take a look at how Pokemon Emerald does theirs. Now, let me just really quickly take my Fire Red and Leaf Green game and move that all the way over here. Okay, cool. Now, let's take a look at a cave. What I've got here is a nice little unsuspecting cave that's ready to have a map transfer all set up in it perfectly. But first, let's take a look at any other caves. For example, in the default Pokemon Essentials maps, what we have here is Route 3 and an Ice Cave. What's interesting about caves is they do something slightly different. They have this PB cave exit called before the transfer, and I really like this. It adds a nice, like, cool fade out and fade in when you enter and exit a cave. So PB cave exit is when you're exiting a cave and, like, a bright white light appears. And then the other one is PB cave entrance here, where it's kind of like you're, it fades to black, like you're going into a dark cave. So let's just copy this cave event really quickly, and let's go back to our tutorial map and paste that right here edit it a little bit so that way instead of taking us into an ice cave it takes us into our cave that we've made and plops us right there seems good so far now let's go back to that ice cave take a look at their map transfer copy it go back to our cave once more and paste it here we go this one is called exit and it calls pb cave exit it's pretty good it's almost set up but we still have a little bit of tweaking that we still need to do ourselves so just like the other one, we need to turn stop animation on, and let's set the speed and frequency to 2. Very nice. Now, let's set up those events around it again. Let's make a new one here. We're on event touch. There is a conditional branch where if the player is facing down, then it sets the graphic. Uh, where's set move root? Why am I blind? You know, sometimes these things happen. It sets the graphic of exit to arrows. Otherwise, let's just copy and paste this again. It sets the graphic of exit to none. Bada boom. There we go. If you touch this event and you're facing down, it changes the exit to arrows. And then copy it and paste it. And then paste that there. Boom. So if you step on this, it changes the exit to none for no graphic and bada boom that should be our cave all set up the stop animation is on the frequency is two it's ready to transfer us there is one more thing that i will say though real quick let's take a look at our fire red and leaf green example if you go into a cave you'll notice that the way that the transfer works for caves is you don't go in to the tile you actually transfer right before the tile so let's showcase that Oh gosh, of course I'm getting attacked by, let me guess, a wild Zubat. Ah, uh, it's Mount, it wouldn't be Mount Moon if I wasn't getting swarmed by Zubats, right? Anyway, check this out. We are standing here, one tile up above where the map transfer is going to occur. If I press down, I don't walk into it, I just transfer. So we need to make sure that that is true for our game as well. Let's go here and take a look at our database. We can go to our tile sets tab and go to the caves tile set scroll on down and make sure that these have passage disabled earlier when i was testing this passage was enabled passage and then just click it boop make sure that these have x's on them for passage so that way you don't walk through them anyway 
I think that this is all set up and good to go. Let's get back into our game real quick. And let's do this transfer, but for a cave. I think it's just about all good to go once everything's done compiling. Thank you very much, Pokemon game. Let's walk into this nice little cave now. Look how beautiful it is. All right, in we go. And here we are. And then out we go. You'll notice that it's doing the PB cave entrance and exit with those uh, fades also. I just said it so there was no music in this cave. Unfortunately, it's just the uh, Pallet Town music. But here, you see it's still following the same rules. If we move left and if we move right, the arrow doesn't appear. If we move down, the arrow does appear. And, you know, we can stand down here and rotate. Look at that. That's looking pretty snazzy, right? Out we go. So... That's all looking good, but how do other Pokemon games do it? Really quickly, I'm going to switch to Pokemon Emerald here, and we can look at how Pokemon Emerald does their map transfer arrows. All right, I've got Pokemon Emerald up and running now, and you'll see here, when I go to a map transfer, it doesn't move up and down. Instead, the arrow changes green, and we can set that very easily ourselves by just making a different arrow graphic. So, really quickly, I'm going to steal that color from the... Uh, Pokemon Emerald graphic here. I'm gonna go back into paint. I'm just gonna paste my screenshot. Holy guacamole, I'm pretty zoomed in here, but this is the color that we want. So let's just copy this, go back into Photoshop here where our arrow tile is. Let's paste this bad boy in. And of course this looks like garbage right now, but it's not uh, formatted. Let's take our previously existing layer and just copy it and make a new layer. And really all we need to do is just take these and drag them down four pixels because the arrow does not move at all in Pokemon Emerald. It just flashes green. Now we can just take our handy dandy little eyedropper, which I just hold alt for that, yoink, and then just paint our arrows. Actually, no, we don't want to paint all of our arrows. We want to paint half of our arrows so that way it flashes between white and green. Now let's turn this off. And now what we can do is just, uh, you know, file, save as, and instead of calling this arrows, let's just call this arrows two, or we could call it arrows underscore emerald. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit more organized, isn't it? Now let's go back into our RPG maker. And how about for our house, instead, when we step on this, instead of changing to arrows, we edit and instead it changes to arrows underscore emerald. Huh, it's not detecting arrows underscore emerald right now. Let me figure that out. Okay, I figured out what the problem was. My Photoshop was being stupid and it didn't save the file. I checked the folder and it wasn't in there, but now it is, arrows underscore emerald. Now let's return to RPG Maker. Let's go back to our event. Now let's go to our exit graphic and instead of arrows, select arrows underscore emerald. There we go. Here it is. Now, that's all we need to do. You only need to tweak it in that one location and then everything will look good. Let's go back to our house, and let's say we're playing Pokemon Emerald now. Instead, now the arrow will flash between green and white, just like Pokemon Emerald. And when we move left and right here, then it won't pop in again. But if we aim down, then it will. There we go, that's pretty nifty, isn't it? Let's use a side-by-side -side comparison here between Pokemon Emerald and our game. Look at that. It looks like the arrow is a little bit less tall in Pokemon Emerald. There's a little bit more of a cutoff there, and it's kind of like on the other side of the map. But you get the idea, right? That's a pretty easy little tweak and whatnot. I will put uh, both of these uh, Emerald, uh, not Emerald, both of these arrow uh, files uh, in the description below. So if you want to just download these and use them for your game, feel free to. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it for this tutorial. Hopefully this video helps you. I think that this is not a very big thing to put in a Pokemon game, but it's a small little thing that I think people with attention to detail will notice, and it gives it that extra level of polish. I originally um, put these in my Pokemon uh, April Fool's video because I wanted people to think that it was a very legitimate version of Fire Red and Leaf Green, and I did everything I could besides getting that Nidoran sprite at the very start correct. Uh, damn that thing. But uh, uh, yeah, if you want to make your game look closer to Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green or closer to Pokemon Emerald, then you need to get all the little details just right. And uh, getting these map transfer arrows is a little detail that I personally think goes a long way. I appreciate them, and hopefully more people will use them in their Pokemon fan games, because 
like I said, I think they look pretty nice. Anyway, um, speaking of little details uh, from Pokemon Fire and Leaf Green, I think the next tutorial that I'm going to cover is the battle UI. I updated all of the battle UI for my Easter egg, uh, not Easter egg, my April Fool's video as well. So that way it matches Pokemon Fire and Leaf Green, and I'll show that now. But yeah, I think I'm going to do that for my next video. Take a look at this. It was a kind of a pain in the ass, and I would have to deconstruct how I did it, because uh, it... <laughs> I don't remember everything I changed. I changed a lot of stuff. But yeah, look at that. I got the Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green Battle UI. Anyway, I'm, I'm flexing now. Look at all the cool, look at all the cool things I made. Hee hee hee. Anyway, that about does it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope it helped you. And I hope that you include these in your Pokemon fan games moving forward, because I love them. Anyway, thank you once again for watching. I am, like I said before, I'm pretty bad at ending these types of videos. But until next time, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, you guys, and I hope that you all have a good one.